5th graders at Virgay Elementary from Nacogdoches, Texas. Whiff and Dirty George, The Zebra Incident by Stephen Swinburne. Chapter 1. Where and When? Early train to London, June 1969. Who? William, Whiff, King George, Dirty George, Holtz and other passengers. The sound. Clickety clack, clickety, clickety clack and clickety clack. Me trousers are falling down, cried Dirty George. Mine too, said Whiff. What's going on? It's mad, said Whiff. Whiff checked his wristwatch. 7.25 a.m. Exactly. The train to Paddington Station had just crawled to a stop when every zipper unzipped, every buckle unbuckled, every button unbuttoned. The railway car burst into bedlam. Handbags yawned wide. Briefcases sprung open. Fountain pens zoomed by Whiff's nose. Passengers shoved and struggled to grab their trousers and skirts. Dirty George had never seen so many pairs of pink polka dot undies. Eyeglasses, cufflinks, hairpins, brooches hurled to the floor. Belts curled around ankles like snakes. A weird energy force had invaded this train, pulling everything downward. Dirty George tried to yank up his trousers. Here, use this. Whiff dug out some rope from his rucksack and tossed it to Dirty George. Then he wrenched the rope that held up his trousers. What's that wearing noise? noise? It's coming from over there, said Whiff, pointing to the luggage rack five rows ahead. At that moment, the door to car number three swung open and incept a large rabbit. The rabbit straddled a seat and blew a silver whistle, whistle dangling from its neck. The passenger looked up. Say cheese! A white flash filled car number three as the man in the rabbit suit snapped a photo. Then he reached above the luggage rack, grabbed a small silver disc, and dashed through the train's open door. The speaker filled the railroad car with the sound of a maniacal laugh. Craggy, what was that? said Dirty George. I don't know, but come on, said Whiff, let's chase that rabbit. Whiff, do we have to? Come on, mate, let's see what he's up to. Whiff sneezed, squeezed through the crowd car next to the exit. If there was one thing Whiff and Dirty George could do, it was run. They excelled at running. If they took a class in running, they'd get A's. When school bullies threatened to pummel you because you had no pants, Whiff, or wallop you because you were poor and smelled of socks and old fish, Dirty George, you found your licks. The boys ducked through the passenger car door. They spotted the rabbit escaping along a deserted part of the platform. Whiff dug out a length of rope. The boys tugged the straps on the rucksacks and took off like sprinters. Whiff tied a slip, mo slip knot on the run. He'd practiced tying knots while running a hundred times before. Ever since his hands could grasp, Whiff had messed around about with Matt with rope. Whiff grew up believing that when your pants are tragically killed while watching a lasso demonstration at a Texas rodeo, you never, ever want to find yourself trapped by a rope. He practiced tying and untying knots every day, every spare moment. He was the best. The boys caught up with the rabbit at the end of the platform. Whiff flung the noose. The knot sagged the rabbit's arm, and the boys planted their feet and tugged. The rabbit jerked to a halt. He spun to face his pursuers, and gripping the rope with one hand, pulled both boys toward him. Crikey, Whiff, it's a super rabbit! Now what? It wasn't the first time Whiff had landed in a sticky situation. Nan, Whiff's grandmother, pleaded with him to think before he leaped, but Whiff kept leaping. And his run-ins with neighborhood ruffians and school thugs earned him black eyes and thin white scars above his upper lips. For an instant, Whiff thought how easy it would be to release the rope and run, but he'd saved his pennies to buy this good strand of double-braided nylon rope, and he wasn't about to lose it. Whiff and Dirty George leaned back on the heels and tugged with everything they had, but the rabbit dragged them closer. When they'd reached arm's length, the rabbit flashed a smile of dagger-like teeth. Looks like the rabbits outsmarted the foxes, eh, lads? Mister, we only wanted to have a look at that that silver disc, said Whiff. Shut up, you cheeky tykes, said the rabbit. You're lucky I'm in good humor, because if you ever see the likes of two again... The man whipped off his rabbit mask. Whiff and Dirty George stared into a pair of menacing eyes. Gray black whiskers and an untamable mass of greasy black hair framed the man's twisted smile. The boys recoiled at the villain's teeth and vile breath. I'll have your throats, said the rabbit with a wicked grin. He held Whiff's rope up to his mouth. He sliced it cleanly in one bite, sprang from the platform, scuttled across his track, and vanished down a dark tunnel like a rat racing to its hole.